Hey, what is up everybody? Um, this is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. I am uh, a couple days removed um, from watching it, uh, but I, st I, st I see now that uh, The Wrestlers, I don't know if it's uh, season one or if it's the, uh, the complete documentary and that's gonna be it is over, but it seems like it's it's gaining success uh, with more people wanting to talk about it on um, Twitter. Um, that I basically wanted to give my thoughts on it. I'll tell you the truth: the wrestlers following around OVW, um, Al Snow, Haley J. I was bored out of my mind. I honestly think that I watch some uh, documentaries on Netflix sometimes. Uh, and they're really, really good. And if you would have told me we were getting like an eight-part documentary series on a uh, independent group um, putting on wrestling in this country, I would be pretty pumped. If you told me that Al Snow, uh, a name from Wrestling Past, was going to be part of it, and um, it was going to be like the the life or death of, of, of this company, I would I would think honestly, it's going to be pretty good. Um, but I watched um, the the entire documentary series all eight episodes all leading up to uh the, the big event at the end um it's called like strangle mania or something like that um, at one point they were, they were calling it the big one and i thought that was a pretty good name for it and then it seemed like it just changed they kept saying that this is our wrestlemania um this is what they're all leading up to um they set the table basically talking about um, that the company was losing about you know $30,000 a month. Um, and the guy who owned it was like a local celebrity uh, who was used to be a lawyer who then turned into like a, a radio sports uh, talk show host that seemed like he had a little bit of buzz that it was on a pretty good station there. He seemed to be um, like the main guy that kind of played off of the whole uh, University in Kentucky versus Louisville feud and uh, that's kind of what pushed uh, the entire market uh, you know when probably when Kentucky's good when Louisville's good their numbers are good um, kind of like a lot like the sports radio here in Sacramento you know when the Kings are good they're gonna carry that station uh, with people calling and talking about it probably when the Kings are bad probably going to help them out with the, you know, people getting a release uh, to talk about, you know, what they think they, they can do to fix the team uh, and things like that. But um, I honestly thought, you know, they, 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 they said that they needed to break even. They were giving them the, the summer to do it. They were going on like a summer tour um, where they were going to be going around Kentucky, wrestling at like uh, state fairs, county fairs, um, big events. Uh, at one point, they, they held a, a wrestling show in a park uh, during SummerSlam weekend trying to, to get off of all the WWE fans um, that were in Nashville. Uh, they, they also, um, now that I think about it, Nashville's in Tennessee. What the hell were they doing there? Uh, <laughs> they, 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 they were also talking about StarCast, uh, and uh, I guess it was an NWA show, or maybe they just had the name. Uh, Jim Crockett Promotions uh, on it. Um, the the Ric Flair's uh, last match. Um, they, they just bought off of those people that were being there. I don't think they charged people money to come to that show. I think they just put it on in the back. Um, when it comes down to it, I don't think they achieved any of their goals in the end. They, they basically they told the announcer it was his job to put butts in the seats. Um, that, that you know that he needed to be able to look out and see that um, the crowd, the, the, the stands were full. They were getting pay per view numbers and, and money was coming in, or they were gonna let him go. Uh, and at the end, you look at Strangle Mania. I mean, uh, uh, or the big one, whatever they called it. You know, there was people there, but did the people buy the tickets to get there? Because at one point they were saying that they had only sold so many tickets because they raised ticket prices to 20 bucks, uh, you know, doubling their normal um, ticket price to come in. Uh, at one point they, they were telling us they, they sold out of the ringside seats, which there's only so many uh, to go around. But did they just kind of, you know, paper it, I guess you can say, let people in in order to, uh, to fill up the arena 
um, because Netflix uh, was there filming the whole deal. Um, in my opinion, um, going back to like the days with TNA, um, Jesse Goddard's uh, Mr. Pectacular, I think that's the biggest star they have. Uh, the guy that came over um, from India, uh, who was a part of the whole Jeff Jarrett Impact Rinka King, and then uh, a part of NXT uh, before being released. He seemed like he was almost like their Hulk Hogan. He's the one that they put in the ring uh, with James Storm. Um, and then James Storm ended up beating him, taking his championship. I don't know if that was because of the fact he was injured or if he got injured in that match. And that's the reason why they couldn't have either one at um, the, the big event at the end. Um, I'm not quite sure. In my opinion, they never really told us the answer to it. Um, they, they just kind of, he was, arm was in a sling. And then they were saying uh, that he couldn't push it uh, in order to, to get ready um, for that match, even though it was supposed to be a big one. Um, James Storm, that guy took a lot of shrapnel in this, in this documentary. Um, basically, they were saying that, you know, his price was $600 to come wrestle the event. They didn't think that they were going to get $600 uh, worth out of James Storm uh, for being there. Then all of a sudden, they put the championship belt on him. Well, if he, it, it wasn't worth bringing him in once. You put the title on him, you got to bring him back in order for him to drop it. So that makes no sense. Um, I, didn't, I, I didn't get that at all. I understand that he's probably the biggest name that they have there. But um, Jesse Goddard, I can't tell what that guy was doing. He was the only guy that I really know who he was uh, because of his time. I think he was wrestling with Robbie E. At the, t at, at, at the end of like, well, it wasn't the end because they're still going. But the end of me watching TNA, um, he was there. And uh, I, I figured he would kind of be in the more of the main event matches. But they barely talked to the guy. And uh, they put his name on the screen a few, a few times. But they never really treated him like he was the guy that people cared about. And um, to me, he was the only guy that ever really got any screen time with any uh, major company. Um, that, that I would know who he is. Um, but, you know, they, they, they didn't close the budget at all, um, selling more tickets to, um, um, you know, uh, close the gap on the 30,000. At the, at the end, just the guy was like, hey, I told you I was only gonna buy you Michelob lights from the bar, but you guys can have whatever you want because you put on one hell of a show. Making it, the guy was like spending more. It was like, this guy was like caught in this dream. He never really said that he loved wrestling and they were kind of weird about him coming in and buying the company. But, um, you know, the, the wrestlers, they don't like the fact that the guy comes in and tries to micromanage the shows. Uh, making sure that guys are doing certain things and he was he was kind of saying the way that people should be you know using their character and things like that but then the show would start and he would just leave uh, and just get a report about what happened after it was there it wasn't like he really cared about um, what the guys did or anything like that he only just kind of cared what the report was of, of what they were doing um, so it's not like the guy loves wrestling that much you think if, if you know, you're already at the wrestling show and they're fixing to wrestle. Unless you got like something really, really important you gotta run off to, why wouldn't you stay and, and watch it? Especially if you're the one paying for all this and you're going in the hole $30,000 a month and threatening to fire your announcer. Um, and how is the announcer making 30 grand a month? That's what I, that was another thing I was, you, you let that guy go. Maybe you're giving them a grand to two grand a month to work part time for you. Um, they did have live television um, each week, uh, so maybe he's he's working one whole day. Maybe he's doing some office work for you. But the guy's kind of working part time. Anything more than that, it's kind of like wowzers. So most of your money is probably going to be going to your wrestler guys. Um, I think that. Um, 
every indie uh, you ever go to, the one indie that I go to more than anything else is, is BTW um, in the Bay Area. Um, they've, I think he actually retired. Um, they had a guy, um, had the, kind of like a cowboy uh, gimmick, Shane Cody. Um, he reminded me a lot of the guy Cashflow um, that seemed like he was one of the aging veterans that they had had. I'll tell you the truth, they, they showed like his coming up days of like being in the business. I don't remember him at all. So he must kind of just be like a local legend that's just always been there, who never got called up to the big time. Um, he honestly seemed pretty cool. Uh, I would want to be a fan of his if, if I lived there. But the main girl and guy that they kind of use, they make them look like bad guys <laughs> in there. And um, they don't really portray them that well. You know, they, they um, really hit hard on the, on the drug use um, at the shows um, and things like that. And they even really went into domestic violence <laughs> in the last episode. I think it, her name was Haley J. Wanting to, you know, get that call to go to WWE. Um, she doesn't have the look. <laughs> she doesn't have the skill set. She might leave and go somewhere else, but there's no way in the world, even with the rub of this show, especially the way that they portrayed her, that she's going anywhere. I can remember honestly, um, after um, Beyond the Mat came out. Um, one of the guys that was getting the WWE tryout, Mike Modest, um, he got signed to WCW, I think a lot of, because of that movie, and they wanted to sort of, like, see if they could get something off of that. He got a few wins on TV, wrestled some matches, but uh, didn't really blow anybody away or become a big star. I, I don't think there's any chance in the world they're getting extra work from WWE. Um... I don't think there's any any way of anything. Um, I, I just and the guy I can't remember what his name, but he had like the weird lines he kind of shaved into his beard. That really weirded me out, and especially when he got it freshly done. Um, it looked even worse, honestly, in my in my mind. But when they were interviewing him, he was like sitting in his car, and they were interviewing him from the outside in. And he was kind of like hanging out the window. And I know they do these these interviews in, in kind of places where the guys feel comfortable and things like that. I've never seen them do that. I've seen it like in documentaries where they interview and you're driving down the road. But it kind of like made him seem like he had somewhere else to be. Like they were interviewing him as he left the show. But he just like, he never left. It was almost like he didn't want to be there, but he had nowhere else to go. And at the end, he finally drove away. I thought that was honestly hilarious. Um, Al Snow with the mind for wrestling, honestly, I think is pretty good, but I don't think he really has a lot to work with there. And where he's working, I don't think is ever going to see success that I, I think you should, you should lose, use that job as like a starter job to move on to another one unless he really likes living in that area and that's where he sees himself living for the rest of his life and that's just the job he wants to have but to be getting stressed on by the owner that you know he's not putting on a good show or anything else and I, I think he's doing the best with what he's got especially putting on weekly television and um putting on those pay-per-views so ohio valley should be looked at as yeah john cena batista brock lesnar um, Shelton Benjamin, uh, Randy Orton. Yeah, they all went through there, but WWE sent them there. It's not like Ohio Valley found those guys. It's not like Ohio Valley trained those guys. WWE had trainers there that trained them. All that, all that's left from Ohio Valley is the name Ohio Valley. And I, I think they think they're bigger than they are. They, they, want to become the next big thing they want to be wwe they want to be a aew at one point the aew was trying to find some way to work with them as a feeder and they didn't think that that was going to give them a good enough rub that they were getting anything out of it uh, you know when cash flow went there and worked that six-man enhancement match he got the right idea he went there to make money he knew that he was going there to lose but that's the only way that you're going to be seen to see if AEW wants to sign you 
or somebody else wants to bring you in for some other independent. You have to do things like that in the wrestling business. It's the way it's always been, and it's the way it's always will be. If you look back at old NXT shows, if you go back and watch NXT show from a year ago, you'll see some guy that's like one of the main guys there doing a job, and you're like, I didn't realize that was a guy, because they didn't put them out there to make him look great. They put him out there to make the other guy uh, look great. I mean, I... I'm not the smartest guy out there watching wrestling, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows, especially watch, watching all those um, wrestling challenge matches, wrestling superstar matches, um, wrestling All-American uh, or WWF All-American on USA Days. Like, that was nothing but enhancement matches. I know what they are. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're not going to get any shine out of there. You're not going to flip them on there and be the one, two, three kid and then... Um, score and, and and score a victory on on the main guy and win the strap there it's not what you're going there you're going there to make a good payday that's going to make you get through the month that's going to give you some light on television the word when you go work your independent match somebody wants to buy your t-shirt somebody wants to buy an eight by ten because they don't want to miss out on the next up and coming star so i don't know that's what i think but um i didn't think the show was great but I don't fault anybody for going out there and watching it.